Hey guys, welcome to another overclocking tutorial. This time uh, for the Asus Maximus 7 Ranger motherboard in combination with the Intel Core i5-4690K CPU. You can see I just entered the BIOS and let's go to the main first to see I'm, this time I'm using uh, 16 gigabyte of memory, two times uh, eight gigabyte, uh, quite common kit from G uh, Crucial, the Crucial Ballistics board. So first of all, let's go to the voltage monitor to see all the stock values. You can see the system is just r uh, running completely stock at the moment. You can see the stock core voltage is around 1.072 volt, and also remember. CPU input voltage about 1.85. Now go back to the extreme tweaker and first of all we set the AI overclock tuner to XMP. This will load the XMP profile of your memory. You can see you're now using um, the extreme memory profile at 1600 MHz uh, C9924 and it's also setting the voltage already correctly. Uh, you don't have to touch these. It's only for BCLK overclocking which we don't need for this case Q CPU. Also you don't have to touch this, it's completely fine. So now go to sync all cores, make sure this is set to this value and at this value you can basically select how high you want to clock your CPU. Uh, let's go for 4.3 gigahertz, so we put 4.3 uh, 43 here. Uh, multiplied with the BCLK this will be your final uh, CPU core clock in megahertz. This is the CPU cache ratio. The cache ratio basically uh, connects the CPU core with the cache. You can also overclock this one but it will not give you um, a big performance boost but you risk to have uh, stability issues so usually I advise to just fix this one to 35. No need to touch the internal PLL over voltage for Haswell. Also, you can uh, you can leave this one on auto. Uh, DRAM frequency is set by the XMP, totally fine. Extreme tweaking is only needed for, for benchmarking. You can also see if you go to the DRAM timing control, you can see that the, the memory timings are already set by the XMP. If the XMP is not working for you, you can set those manually. Uh, you have to check the vendor's page of your memory for that. Okay, so now go down to the voltages. Okay, so First of all, the CPU core voltage, you can see the stock value, like I showed you earlier in the hardware monitors, about 1.072 volt. Um, I'm using a Noctua NHD14, I think, I can't remember, um, CPU cooler, which is quite strong, so I can set this one to, let's say, um, 1.2 volt, it's, that's fine for, for air cooling. Um, to raise this one, we have to set it to manual mode and set this one to 1.2 volt. The cache voltage, you can just fix it to the uh, stock value. Manual mode, just fix it to 1. Point, let's say 1.3 volts, uh, 2, 3, totally fine. No need to touch those, that's only needed for uh, if you increase the memory clock, but for 1600 there's no need to touch those. Okay, so um, now let's go to the CPU input voltage. That's basically the, the voltage delivered from the main board to the CPU itself. And the CPU itself will change this voltage uh, to the CPU core voltage. Let's just fix it to the stock value. I want 8.5 for my CPU for both, initial and eventual. Initial is basically the voltage for the boot and eventually is after boot and or post. And uh, it could be if you increase your, if you want to clock higher later, you have to increase this one as well. Um, not only the, the core voltage. DRAM voltage is already set by the XMP profile, so don't no need to touch it. Yeah, okay, that's, that's already basically it. Um, usually I like to go to uh, the CPU configuration in the advanced me uh, menu. And the CPU power management configuration. And because I don't really like um, speed step and the C, uh, the C states, um, this will cause your CPU to clock down in idle. And if you want to clock 
a little bit higher than normally, um, it can help the stability to disable those. Okay, so now um, all you have to do is hit F10 and go to Windows. Okay, so we're now in Windows. Um, the tools you need, basically CPU-Z, CoreTemp and Prime95. You can download them uh, on my website, I put the link in the description. Uh, first of all, take a look at CPU-Z. This tool will show you all the details of your system. You can see we're now running at 4.3 GHz. Uh, at the 1.2 volt, which we set in the BIOS. You can also see we're using the i5-4690K CPU. If you go to mainboard, you can see the Maximus uh, Asus Maximus 7 Ranger. And also memory, you can see the 16 gigabyte. And uh, Northbridge frequency is the cache frequency, which we set to 35, so 3.5 gigahertz. Also the memory is applied correctly. Okay, and another tool which is very important is core temp. It will show you the core temperature of your CPU. The core temperature of those CPUs should not exceed, let's say, 90 degrees on load. So um, we will use Prime95 to test the stability of the CPU. Open it, go to custom, check this one, 1344 here, and 1344 here. I also put a link in the description how this tool works if you want to know more about it. Uh, okay, so hit OK. This will now put a lot of load in your CPU. You can see it here, 100% load on each core. And you should keep this test running for about one hour to see if it's stable or not. If it's stable like this, you can leave it like that and just play some games for stability testing if you want to. And yeah, if, if the system maybe crashes, and the, the, the temperature stays below 90 degree, you can increase the CPU core voltage just maybe like 1.21 volt or 1.22 volt just to see if it's stable afterwards. Um, yeah, the golden rule is to stay below 90 degrees on uh, this CPU. If you want to clock higher, you probably have to increase the input voltage as well. Okay guys, um, yeah, have fun overclocking and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this board or any settings in the BIOS. I will put the, the BIOS screenshots of, the, of this overclocking in the description as well in the link. Bye!